I titled today's mind map, Learning and Learning to Learn. Now, what we're going to discuss today are some components that I include in my recent version 2 release of my mind map program. If you're a student of my mind map program, then over the weekend you probably received the email that stated that version 2 has been released and you can log in and access version 2. If you're not a student of the program, then I recommend it for anyone that is learning how to use mind maps effectively so that they can comprehend, retain information better, so they can learn effectively, so they can actually learn the exact process that I go through when I create my mind maps on my channel, as well as learn how to learn, going a higher level to that, a meta level higher, learning how you learn. In the program, we get into distinct principles, and I integrate a number of proven methodologies to facilitate accelerated learning. So here are some points that I would like to discuss as I was reflecting upon some information that I was reading regarding the work of Maria Montessori. Some of you might actually be aware of Montessori education based on the principles developed by Maria Montessori. And she actually opened up her first school for children in Rome, 1907. And during that time, she researched and she ended up going on to create materials after she realized that students seemed to understand complex concepts better when they engaged all their senses. Now we can tie this into experiential learning, which is what I always aim to do on this channel. Transformational learning. Engaging the mind, the body, emotions, and really applying these ideas in a way that produces results. I actually recommend that if you want to become better at learning, if you want to learn how to learn, not just the subject, but going a higher level to that, becoming an effective learner, I would suggest learning how to teach. I see the student and teacher as one. When we as teachers or educators teach a student, what we want to do is assume the responsibility. We want to see it from the perspective of we are constantly learning how to teach our students. We are refining. We're getting better at it. And this is a constant journey, so we take the full responsibility. As a student, see yourself not only as the student, but someone that actually assists in helping the teacher understand you better. Those are the kinds of things that I talk about in the mind map program. And so to encourage this, let's speak of three ideas here. Number one, education. The word education comes from the Latin verb educo, which means to educate, draw out, or develop from within. So let's look at that to educate, draw out, or develop from within. I believe that we all have, and she had discovered it as well, inherent abilities. And so thus she gave free choice. And she found that kids showed more interest in practical activities and the materials than the toys. And as these students would work independently, learn independently, they seem to become self-motivated learners. She also found that these students ended up growing up and developing and further encouraging a love for learning. I believe this is a natural way of being. We naturally love to learn. And if you could learn in a way that really resonates with what we're interested in and how we learn, then we'll discover this, such as has been the case for myself. She also found that they were able to understand complex concepts through her process, through this experiential learning process, which is actually, a lot of it had to do with letting go of control, allowing the kids to discover 
what it is that they were interested in. I always say this throughout the videos. I believe we have inherent abilities, inherent interests. And when we find these interests, we actually allow ourselves to learn effectively. We seem to create unnecessary resistance if we're trying to force ourselves to learn something that we're genuinely not interested in. Now, this is something that we want to understand more so about ourselves. And all throughout our discussions upcoming, I would like to go deeper into this idea. What she also found was that spontaneous self-discipline emerged. It appears that they already had self-discipline. And if we align them over to their intuition, what they truly desire, their true interests, they would display automatic self-discipline. And so number two, transmuting overwhelm, tension, and reactivity into flow. And I believe the teacher needs to take the responsibility for this one, to set up an environment that facilitates flow-based learning. One that is free from tension, overwhelm, stress. And one of the best ways to do this is to take the responsibility and perhaps start the conversation with, we are on this journey together. So you can let go of the idea that you have to get it perfect and you have to do it a certain way. We're going to go on this journey together so you can release that tension. Relax. I'm going to discover your natural learning style as we go along. And we're going to connect with that. We're going to find a resonance. And you're going to find you're going to relax a lot more. And you're going to learn effectively. What you're also going to discover is that you're going to actually enjoy learning. So this is more of like a engaging conversation to release the overwhelm, the tension, and the reactivity and transmute that over, that energy over to more of a flow energy, which facilitates accelerated learning. Number three, the 80-20 rule, otherwise known as the Pareto principle, suggests that 80% of outcomes result from 20% of causes. Now, this is a rule of thumb. And so one of the emphasis when we teach and we learn is to focus first on the 20% of the information that will result in, on average, 80% of the comprehension. So let's say you're reading a book. Usually, it's found in the table of contents and noting that information first and then maybe going to certain parts of the book or areas that you're studying and study that information first. This is more of an unconventional, nonlinear approach to learning. And we can consider this more of an entrepreneurial-style learning in which we get started, we apply, and then upon reflection of what we do, we ask the question, what did we learn? What do we need to learn? What did we learn about how we learn? How can we improve our effectiveness when it comes to learning? And so we start with the simplicity, the 20% of the information that produces 80% of the comprehension. Some of you know for many years, and I still do it now and then, as I teach these speed reading workshops in partnership with Iris Reading. One of the things that we talk about in there is to focus on the 20% of the information that results in the 80% of the comprehension first. Focus on that information first, and then go and read. What we then find is that students are able to read faster, comprehend better, and retain that information to a higher degree. So one very important concept to keep into consideration when it comes to learning and also learning how you learn is the relationship between student and teacher. See it as one. You are the student and the teacher, and the teacher, even though assume the formal role as the teacher, ideally would see themselves as the student and the teacher as well very much related to the mastermind principle, what I learned in Think and Grow Rich, where rather than seeing one person as higher than another person, they show up exchanging ideas, perspectives, information. One is looking to learn perhaps a skill, and the other person is looking to transfer that skill and learn how to transfer the skill better. 
Through the process, the student who learns the skill learns the skill in a flow-based way and also learns how they learn, thus further facilitating a higher degree of understanding of the subject and how they learn, and they get better at it with practice. So here's how we do it. Focus on the 20% of the information first and then go and apply that information. So on this channel, we tend to focus on business and personal development information. It's important to take the information, go and apply it, see the kind of results you get from it, and then come back to the videos, come back to the information, and ask the question, what did you learn? What did you learn about how you learn? What are the next things to learn? This is all parts that make up the whole. When you look at any subject, the subject is made up of different parts. Maybe there's a certain aspect of the subject that you would need to learn more so. And what I would suggest is making flow a priority, as I always do, prior to learning. Get into the flow first. And you'll find that by releasing the overwhelm and tension before you learn, you'll assimilate the information a lot easier. So thus, when you're watching videos, when you're studying information, maybe my information on this channel here or programs, Bring yourself more into a relaxed state, a meditation, going for a walk, getting yourself more into a flow. Watch my flow series to help facilitate getting into a flow. And then start learning. You'll actually find that you'll be a lot more engaged in what you're learning and you'll have a heightened degree of awareness to be able to ask those questions that I mentioned. And always remember, the word education comes from the word educo, to educate, draw out, or develop from within. So we're taking information and we're connecting it up, which is why I like mind mapping, because we can see relatability between the information. This removes perceived contradiction. Friction in mind can create unnecessary overwhelm, tension, and reactivity. So what we want to do is learn in a way that connects to existing information that we know. Find relatability. And mind mapping is one of the best ways to do it. Let's talk about learning and teaching opportunities. So we realize then that focusing on the 20% of the information that produces the 80% of the comprehension, understanding, experience, that gives us leverage. We also recognize that being in flow helps us learn effectively. We also recognize that we're taking in information from what we're learning and connecting to what we already know, understand, our reference experience, and that could be very helpful. We want to become better at teaching and also better at learning, and ideally we want to find environments to learn where the student and teacher have this kind of perspective on reality. They see each other as both the student and the teacher. Number one, discover the way you learn naturally. So one of the questions that I say would be ideal to ask is, how do you learn? Now, there's different models. I talk about the ones that I work with in my mind map program. And there's so many of them out there that you can find, learning and teaching models. You've got Kolb's, you've got the format learning model. There's many different learning models. I suggest studying these different learning models. See, when you ask the question, what did I learn about how I learn or how can I learn more effectively, you start to find these kinds of different learning models that exist. Go beyond what you were taught as far as learning models. What I find is that maybe it's changed nowadays, but when I was in school, a lot of emphasis was put on the information and I didn't find as much information on how I learn. So it was more about learning the subject than it was about learning how to learn. And that's the beauty of this kind of information, personal development information, is we focus on the learning and also we focus, we go higher level to that meta, learning how to learn. Find some different learning models. Just do a search. Learning models, teaching models, and go with the ones that resonate. I've dedicated a lot of time finding different learning and teaching models. And many of them I don't work with. I do keep them into consideration. And there are some applications where I might work with a model that I rarely use. 
However, there are some core ones that I love to work with. And one of my favorites you see that I work with all throughout my videos is the logical levels. Number two, find flow in learning for deeper engagement. This is very important. Let's actually talk about the elements of flow. I brought this up in my flow series as learned from the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Excellent book. As you can see, flow is not only something that we do on the day-to-day -day journey, on whatever it is that we're doing, the entrepreneurial journey, the creative expression. It's also something that we can apply when it comes to learning. If we keep flow into consideration and we make flow a priority while we are learning, we will learn a lot more effectively than without flow, because one of the goals for effective learning is really to release from overwhelmed tension and reactivity, transmute that energy into flow, get into the flow. So we got six aspects here that I noted from his book that I want to tie into our conversation today to encourage you to further develop in the areas that you want to develop, but also go beyond that learn how to learn. And, you know, we're going to discuss more of this in the upcoming videos. Immediate reporting and feedback. So when the student and teacher are seen as one, and which is why one-on-one -on -one learning with a consultant or a coach can be very helpful because there's immediate reporting and feedback. There's assignments, there's action items, and there's reflection upon that. We can look at what you learned and also how you learn, what you didn't learn and what would be beneficial to learn, and what you didn't know about how you learn that we can shed some light on. And from there, we can find some models that work well for you. You can also do this within yourself. Keep these things into consideration. Again, good questions to ask. What did you learn? What did you learn about how you learn? Harmony between challenge and skill. Now, learning can be challenging. And challenge is actually fun because we actually are stimulated, as she had found when she would teach these students, they were stimulated by challenge. And through the challenge, they developed skill, and they would develop skill in an accelerated fashion. So we want to challenge ourselves to develop our skills. However, when learning in a flow-based way, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves. So we want to find a right ratio. And I believe mind mapping helps with this because the process that I follow is really building upon your mind maps in an 80-20 way, digestible. So when I used to teach those workshops and we used to have students that show up and they were extremely overwhelmed by all the information, we would go through processes and show them how to break things down in a way that was in alignment with the 80-20 principle. And so they would actually find flow in learning during their learning sessions, just in learning in general. So we want challenge, but we want the right amount of challenge where we don't feel overwhelmed. And let's say, for example, you're starting a business. You might recognize that there are many different things that a person can benefit from learning in regards to business and entrepreneurship. But we work on each of those areas a little bit at a time, and we get better at it with practice. One of the three areas I always suggest to work on, direct response marketing, consultative selling, and copywriting. Good foundations for the entrepreneur. Now, there's a lot of information, and it can be very overwhelming to go really deep into study in these areas. And so the way I suggest it is to just read a couple books, maybe some blog posts, or watch some videos, and just test it. Try it out. And then from what you do, reflect back and ask the question, what did you learn? Perhaps say, what can you learn next? And also, what did you learn about how you learn if you want to increase your effectiveness in learning? And then we find ourselves being a lot more engaged because we actually enjoy learning. And so there's a part of us that lights up when we learn and we learn how to learn. Go meta to that. Break it down little bit at a time. In NLP, we call this chunking down, that chunking up. You see, there's a big subject, entrepreneurship, and chunk it down into the parts that make up the whole. And if it still feels overwhelming, chunk it down further. 
there's a lot to direct response marketing and consultative selling, but we can chunk it down to, I'm just going to take some of this information and make my first prospecting call. Or at the end of each day, when I do about five or 10 prospecting calls, I'm going to go back to the books. I'm going to go back to the information and I'm going to learn a little bit more. Actually, another thing that I personally integrated that has been very powerful for me is 80% applying the information and 20% learning. So most of the day is applying this information. And then at the end of the day or certain times of the day, I sit down and reflect upon my results, my experiences, and ask myself, what is the next 20% of information as a result of reflecting upon, as a result of asking certain questions? And there are actually many questions one can ask. We discuss those in detail. It's a six to seven. We discuss those in detail in the mind map program. Those questions help stimulate what to learn and study and apply next. And so then what happens is you have accelerated learning and accelerated results. So mind then becomes engaged like the children in accomplishing something that they perceive within as worthwhile. It happens to be something that they are learning and it's challenging and they're real time developing the skill and it looks from a third party perspective, self-discipline internally, they're actually deeply engaged. And so then we go into the deeper aspects of flow, such as actions and awareness become one. A person becomes one with the learning experience. They get absorbed in the learning experience and then they accelerate. They learn even faster. They start to tap into pattern recognition, forming new connections in their mind. And when they're done their study sessions or as the days progress, they look back and they say, wow, I'm learning a lot faster than I did before. And going beyond that, I'm actually able to apply and actually see the automatic behavioral change. I see the results from this information. This is extremely powerful for business and personal development information. We become so involved with what we're doing or learning that the activity becomes intuitive and one with the goal. We have become capable of handling large, complex amounts of data, information. We don't feel overwhelmed because we stepped into the flow. We kept these points into consideration. And as we engaged in our learning sessions, our study sessions, we were maintaining the flow and actually going into deep stages of flow, which we'll talk about in the moment, which is autotelic. A person becomes autotelic, one with. They enjoy the journey as much as the destination. So they keep learning and you could say they lose themselves in the learning experience. And I'm not the exception to the rule because I've worked with thousands in this area to also facilitate the same experience, the same kind of results in their particular area of study. They make rapid, correct decisions, decision-making automatic. They are able to decide a lot easier because they're forming connections relationships, and even finding nuanced distinctions, finding nuanced perspectives. There's one way of doing things, and there's another way of doing things, and there are infinity ways in between that spectrum, and they're finding those nuanced distinctions and relating it over to their goals, their learning, their behavioral change, their transformation, and this is a natural way of being. And so when we keep these ideas into consideration, we're really aligning with the natural way that we are. And that's one of the things I believe she had discovered through this process. Another person who also follows a similar process, who used to teach languages highly effectively, his name was Michelle Thomas. Look it up. The Michelle Thomas Method. Distractions are excluded out of consciousness. Fear, doubt, and indecision tapers away. Time is even distorted. Now, this is something we actually have all experienced. I'd like you to pause for a moment and reflect back on your life. Think about a time where you are deeply engaged in learning. You actually enjoyed what you were learning. And time just seemed to fly. Time distortion. You were so one with your learning experience. You were engaging so deeply. See, those are clues of what you're interested in, what you truly love, and those things can be turned into a business or a career 
or any kind of creative expression. And I believe one of the keys for revealing this within ourselves is to actually encourage what we talked about here in the beginning. Education comes from the Latin verb educo, meaning to educate, draw out, or develop from within. Take in and connect up to who you really are. Encourage learning the things that you truly desire to learn. And then to facilitate that, to increase your effectiveness, ask the questions. What did you learn? What did you learn about how you learn? And understand and know yourself to a higher degree. And what you'll find is that this will facilitate not only learning what you really want to learn, but discovering within yourself your inherent abilities, your inherent interests. And if you would like, you could turn them into careers or businesses or even have that as a creative artistic expression, something that you just do. You just express because that's what you really want in life. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Again, if you would like to become a student of my mind map program, I'll put a link in the description to that. Or if you would like to be a student of all five of my programs, I've got a deal for that. I'll put a link in the description. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. We can say, I realize that I have the ability to discover within myself what I'm inherently desiring to experience in life. I find joy and deep commitment and engagement in learning those abilities about myself. As a result, I find the teachers, the information, and I discover that the student and teacher are one. I'm able to discover through the process how I learn as well as I encourage certain teaching styles, learning modalities, and find flow in the process. I embrace the challenge of learning as I discover that I'm inherently masterful at learning. I find myself becoming more autotelic while I learn, bringing forth a higher degree of focus, concentration, and emerge from my learning sessions with a higher degree of comprehension, retention, and transformational change. I'm able to see it in my results more so every day. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.